Hello, our paper is called A Bitten Skull of Talosaurus Consensus and a Review of Mosasaur on Mosasaur Pathology and Fossil Record. I am Roy Puzio and my fellow members are David Henneman, Scott Lestova, and Garvey McEwen. The focus of our paper are mosasaurs, particularly Tylosaurus cansensis, which were large predatory animals that inhabited the prehistoric ocean during the late Cretaceous period. Mosasaurs grew to be almost 20 meters in length and shared and competed with other sea-dwelling reptiles such as the plesiosaur. The anatomy of the mosasaur proposes a quick burst of speed to capture prey similar to modern sharks, instead of prolonged chases to hunt down prey. This is evident from its fluked tail. The main focus of this paper is the identification of the predator that attacked and killed Talosaurus cansensis. Mosasaurs are known to prey on others of their own species, along with plesiosaurs and other smaller aquatic animals, but mosasaurs do, however, have a predator of their own, Cretoxorana mentelli, which was a large shark during that time period. This brings us into the question of our paper, which is, was the fatal wound found on Talosaurus cansensis caused by another mosasaur or another aquatic predator, such as Cretoxorana mentelli? And this is done so by looking at the various wounds and skeletons found at the site. The materials used in this study included the skeleton of the Talosaurus and consisted of a skull and seven vertebrae. In 1968, this fossil was discovered in Kansas. In this image, you can see where the fossil was discovered specifically in Midwestern Kansas. Moving on to the methods used in this study, it involved pictures taken of the specimen's wounds. Measurements of the gouges were taken, then compared and contrasted to the jaws of other species who lived alongside the Tylosaurus. In the image on the left, you can see the compared pictures of two healed puncture wounds from the Tylosaurus's jaw, as well as a broken tooth from the Tylosaurus. In the image on the right, you can see the left and right lateral view of the Tylosaurus's skull. From the pictures and measurements taken, we observed that the skull roof suffered two gouges from the middle to the back. Puncture wounds were also found at the front and right sides of the skull. Bone regrowth from these wounds was also close to non-existent suggesting that the Tylosaurus was close to his death. To identify the attacker who could have inflicted these wounds on this Mosasaur fossil, the scientists observed the various aspects of the skull and neck. From analyzing the location, size, and depth of these marks and punctures located on the Mosasaur skull, it was inferred that the only animal that could inflict such damage would be another Mosasaur. In addition, the angle at which the specimen's neck was found implies the same conclusion because it suggests trauma that is consistent with the hypothesized hunting methods of mosasaurs. From the picture in this slide, you can see the specific bite marks and locations that were found on the specimen. From this analysis, the scientists inferred that the only possible predator that could have inflicted the wounds found on the fossil would be another larger mosasaur. This finding is consistent with the known hunting behavior of mosasaurs in that they often attacked other members of their species. As touched upon in the previous slide, you can observe the angle of the neck of the found mosasaur fossil. This angle suggests the blunt trauma experienced by the victim in the fatal attack. In the picture below, you can observe the assumed angle of attack that would cause such damage to the specimen. Due to the depth of the punctures in Tylosaurus's skull and the spacing and shape of the gashes, it is likely that it was attacked by another larger mosasaur. This attack is likely what caused its death, possibly due to the severance of its spine. Its death could also have resulted from its cranial cavity being crushed, something that only another mosasaur would have been capable of. Although it is not possible to learn everything about an organism we cannot physically interact with, we can still learn enough from its remains and its trace fossils to understand its behavior and diet, and armed with that knowledge make educated assumptions about how it interacted with its environment and the world that it lived in.